everyone in the previous video we studied the voltage divider bias configuration in this video we are going to study the common gate configuration so you can see the common gate configuration on your screen in the common gate configuration gate is common between drain and source and the input signal is applied to the source terminal and the output signal is taken from the drain terminal as you can have a look so in common gate configuration the input signal is applied input signal is applied to the source terminal input signal is applied to the source terminal and the output signal is taken from the drain terminal the output signal is taken from drain terminal and if you can have a look we have two dc sources one is the VDD and the other is the VSS. The VDD is at higher potential with respect to the ground where VSS is at lower potential with respect to the ground. So this is actually minus VSS. And again because we are going to do the DC biasing or the DC analysis. So the uh, coupling capacitors C1 and C2 are going to be open circuited. as their impedance is infinity for DC frequency which is zero frequency so these two branches going to be open circuited so they, that's why we need to emit or remove these two branches and to draw the simplified diagram let me draw the simplified diagram over here so we are again going to have a source which is our VDD we are going to, the res going to have a resistor rd and then we are going to have the n channel j fit so let me draw the n channel j fit over here and then we have a resistor rs and then we have the voltage vss and that is going to be at negative potential and again we have a drain terminal over here we have a source terminal over here this is my resistance rs this is going to be my resistance rd and this is going to be my vdd and this is going to be my minus vss and i can define the polarities as minus plus and then we are going to have a ground over here and the other thing is that i am going to have a great gate terminal over here so let me label it as gate terminal and because it's a n channel junction field effect transistor so the direction of arrow will be like this and then i can go on and connect these two and because we have a ground over here as well as here so i can take a common ground so this is now my common gate configuration again the gate is common between drain and source and we have uh, two sources this is at positive potential with respect to ground and this is at negative potential as with respect to ground and this is going to be my VGS so now what I am going to do is that I am going to apply a KVL over here so let me apply a KVL over here the VGS is a drop the current that is flowing through here is the same as the, the current that is flowing through here is the drain current and because we have the FAT and in FAT the drain current is equal to the source current so the same the, and the source current is flowing over here and this is equal to the drain current so we can simply say that ID current flows over here because the IG is approximately equal to the 0 ampere so now let me assume that ID is flowing over here and this is my voltage drop and this is also the current flowing to the RS resistor is also my voltage drop and this is this VSS is my voltage rise. So let me label the uh, voltage drop as positive and let me label the voltage rise as negative and the sum of the voltage across, the, across a circuit is zero as it is given by the KVL. So let me simplify this. We have VGS is equal to VSS minus IDRS. Now this is our equation number one and this is our network equation. And 
we need to draw the network curve from this equation so again we this is the equation of a straight line so again we are going to need only two points when id is equal to zero we have vgs is equal to vss so this is our point number one and that is the point number one is vss and id zero so this is point number one and the point number two is that when vgs is equal to zero id is equal to vss divided by rs so this is point number two for vgs is equal to zero so our point number two is for vgs zero we have id which is vss divided by rs so this is our point number one and this is our point number two so using these points we can draw a graph over here so let me draw a graph over here using these two points uh, so let me draw a curve for this so to draw a curve for this i am going to i am going to draw a straight line and this is going to be my id and again i am going to draw an x axis and x axis is going to be my vgs axis so this is going to be my vgs axis and the point number one is when id is zero we have the vss which is for example this point so let me let this be my point p1 and point number two is for p2 p, point number two is p2 that when id is when vgs is zero and on this curve we have vgs zero over here we have the id vss divided by rs so let me take the second point as this thing so now what i am going to do is that i am going to join these two points using the straight line so these two points have been joined and let me extend these two points so i have extended these two points now this curve is going to be my network curve this is my network curve again i need to also the because this is my jfet and the transfer characteristics is given by shockley equation which is id is equal to idss 1 minus vgs divided by vp whole square and to plot the transfer characteristics we know that when vgs is equal to 0 id is equal to idss when vgs is equal to vp id is equal to 0 and for the third point when vgs is equal to half vp we have id is equal to idss divided by 4 so quickly we can use these three points and draw the transfer characteristic curve so when vgss is equal to 0 we have idss let let this be my idss and when vgss is equal to vp we have id is equal to 0 so let this point be my the vp point and my third point is that vgs is equal to 0 0.5 vp which is around here and then id is equal to idss divided by 4 which is around this point so when we take these three points we are going to join these three points so let me join these three points so this is now my transfer characteristic curve i can label this as transfer characteristic curve so now we have a common point over here and this common point is called my q point or operating point so here they are going to be my idq and there this is going to be my vgsq so by graphical approach we have find the vgsq and the idq by by finding the uh, intersection point of the network curve and the transfer curve the transfer characteristic curve is also called as the device curve so by finding the common point we have find the idq and the vgsq once IDQ and the VGSQ has been found out, we can simply found the uh, the uh, the output uh, the output voltage VDS. Now to find the output voltage VDS, what we need to do is to apply the KVL over here. So to apply KVL over here, we are going to have we are going to have because the both the sources are at positive now so we have vdd plus vss minus idrd minus isrs and minus vds is equal to zero volt 
and by rearranging we have vds is equal to vdd plus vss minus because is is equal to id id into rs plus rd so this is our third equation and this is also very important equation for finding the vds again to find the vs we can simply come over here and to find the vs over here to vs here for example this is our vs to find vs we can again find the vs using the kvl so vs is going to be my minus vss plus idrs so this is going to be again our fourth equation and our third equation was as found out in the previous slide which was v ds is equal to vdd plus vss minus id into rs plus rd and then finally to find the vdd we have again vdd minus id r d so this is going to be our vd and this is going to be equal to vdd minus id r d so this was our equation number four and five so this is all about the common gate configuration